Um, all right, so uh, let's see. We've uh, broken down this triangle. We've gotten uh, this was 49. Um, so now what? So then the y component of that would be the cosine of 20 times 49. That's right. Um, so to find wy, well, wy is adjacent to the 20. So this would be 49 cosine 20 because the 49, uh, because the uh, y component is adjacent. Good. And so that is, is that equal to the normal force? Uh, let's see. In this particular case, it will be. Not in general, but in this particular case, it will be. But let's not jump ahead to that. What else do we need to do in this picture? Oh, well, that was one of the questions, actually. So I guess we might have, yeah, so you're right. That will give us the normal force in this case. That's right. And what else? We need the acceleration, so we need to find the force. Um, and the force is the x component, which is 49 times the sine of 20. Yeah, the x component over here is um, opposite to the 20. So this would be 49 times the sine of 20. Good. And then you have to divide that by the mass. Okay, excellent. That sounds right. Let's just go through that a little bit more systematically. So in this picture over here, one thing we should have done is figured out the directions of the components. For example, is this component pointing up and left or down and right? Down and in left. Right. Down and right, because it represents a, the over, an overall vector that's pointing down. Since the overall vector is pointing down, this one should also be pointing down. And should this vector be pointing up and right or down and left? Should the um, x component be pointing up and right or down and left? Down and left. Down and left, because it represents the overall vector, which is pointing down. So this component should also be pointing down. So is this going to be positive or negative, the y component? It's positive. Well, didn't we say negative, negative according negative. to our uh, Because I chose pointing away from the surface to be the positive direction. So this would be negative. Notice that the trigonometry doesn't give you the sign. Your common sense gives you the, the positive or negative sign. And how about the x component? Would that be positive or negative? Positive. Because we chose down the plane to be our positive direction. So let's get in the habit of always putting in the signs on the components. But the normal force anyway is in the opposite direction right. as the wy, so that would be positive. That is correct. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And it's good that you saw that. Now, how would we do that formally? Well, the next step formally is to write down Newton's second law. Once for the x component, and once for the y component. This is what you have to do on every single mechanics problem. Write down Newton's second law for the x and the y components. Well, let's start with the y component. What should I list as the net forces here on the left? Um, 49 sine 20. Oh, no, it's 49 cosine 20 negative. Well, the n equals. I'll go ahead and figure out what that is. Cosine 20. So that's about negative 46. And 49 sine 20 was about positive 17, rounding off. What we want to do now here is identify all the y forces. Well, which are the forces here that have a y component? The y, w, and the n that they cancel each other out. That's true, but um, let, let's see the formal way to deal with that. What we do is we say that we have the, the y component, and we have the normal force. Now, what should we plug in for the y component? We should plug in negative 46. And what should we plug in for the normal force? Well, we don't know what the normal force is. So we're not plugging in anything for that. And what do we plug in on the right-hand side of this equation? Yeah, how do we know that this is going to be zero? Because they have to cancel each other out. How do we know they have to cancel each other out? Because it's not moving. Yeah, well, it is moving in the x component, but you're right, it's not moving in the y component. And all we care about here is the y acceleration. We talked about this a little bit last time. If an object is motionless in one component, then its acceleration for that component must be zero. 
So that's the reason that allows us to put a zero here. If the object was moving in the y component, these don't have to cancel each other out. Remember that there's nothing that says the normal force always has to equal the weight or the y component of the weight. It's just because this object doesn't happen to be moving that these cancel out. So it's best um, to actually do this step by step by using the equations. You plug the forces individually into the left-hand side here, and uh, then you plug the acceleration in here, and now we can see that you were right all along. The normal force is going to be 46 newtons. Then we can do the same thing over here. What should we write down as the x forces? Wx. And that's the only x force. And what do I put on the right hand side of this equation? 49. Wait, no, I'm just kidding. 5 times ax. Right. Remember that we never put in 9.8 for a. We talked about that last time. And this is not the weight, so we don't put in the weight here um, either. This is just m times a. We already put in the x component of the weight over here. We've already figured out that x component of the weight is 17. So this would now be 17 fifths. 3.4. OK, so we've solved for the two parts here. All right, so we started with a pretty simple problem here. So this was a problem that you might have been able to skip some steps. Uh, but for the more complicated problems you'll see on the test, it's important not to skip these steps. So some more handouts. So what we want to look at is the handout that says how to solve mechanics problems. How to solve mechanics problems. Remember, that's the most important skill you're going to learn all semester. What we just did here is a mechanics problem. This is the most important skill that you're going to use the most times during this whole term. All right, how to solve mechanics problems. Step one, make your free body diagram. Well, we did that here. Identify all the forces on the object. This is key. Now, what's the systematic way for finding all the forces on the object? Well, you can see there's two steps. First of all, identify the object's weight. Everything has a weight, so you always identify the weight then all the other forces have to come from something that is touching the object. This is a very important idea. If something isn't touching the object, it can't exert a force on the object, except for the weight. The weight can act at a distance uh, from the Earth. But this semester, the only force you're going to learn that acts at a distance is the weight. So this semester, besides the weight, all the other forces have to come from contact. Uh, well, in this case, the only thing that was touching this object was the inclined plane. So besides the weight, the only force came from the inclined plane, which was the normal force. Uh, okay, um, choose axes in positive directions for step two. Step three, break things into components. Why did we choose these axes as our components? Why, would, why didn't we want to just choose horizontal and vertical? Um, because if we chose horizontal and vertical, then we would have to break both the normal force and the acceleration into components because the normal force and the acceleration are not parallel to these. Um, whereas with these axes, we only had to break one thing into components. So you want to pick axes that are parallel or anti-parallel to as many vectors as possible, so you don't have to break things into components. Uh, step four, write down Newton's second law, a separate Newton's second law for each component. And if there's more than one object, you need a separate Newton's law for each object as well. So you can easily get a whole bunch of Newton's second laws. Notice that when you're working with Newton's second law, you should work vertically. Notice how I keep the forces on the left-hand side of the equation, and I keep the acceleration on the right-hand side of the equation. A lot of students start doing things like this and working horizontally, but that leads to confusion. Instead, you should set things up vertically. All right, uh, step five, list all the forces in Newton's second law, like we did here. Um, step six, when, um, when applicable, use special formulas. For example, there's a special formula for the weight. We already used that. Uh, step seven is for multiple object problems. Step eight, we're not going to deal with this week. Step nine, reduce the number of variables. All right, the key thing is, the key steps, identify all the forces, break forces into components, and then what do you do with the force components? You list them on the left-hand side of Newton's second law. That's the basic technique. You break the forces into components, then you list all the x components in the x equation, and you list all the y components in the y equation with the correct signs. With the, uh, what happened to my signs here? Oh yeah, with the correct signs as you go. Okay, so as we go through more problems today, we're going to just try to do a bunch of mechanics problems, and we want to try to keep using this method as much as we can. <coughs> 